to another episode of Extra Time with Girls in the Ball. We're coming to you from mostly sunny, sometimes rainy Marbella, and we've got the senior lionesses and the other 23s to discuss. I'm Rachel. I'm Sophie. And this is Extra Time with Girls in the Ball. Now, it won't have escaped your notice if you're watching us on YouTube, but it will if you're listening to us on a podcast. <laughs> we do have guests. <laughs> Welcome, the Guardian Susie Rapp and 90 Moons Emily Kyo. Do you mind me saying you're owned by these people? That's kind of how it sounds, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. not. You well, absolutely not. You know. but, yeah, we can, get, we can get with that. Thanks very much for joining us. We appreciate it. Especially in sunny Marbella, you're taking time out of your sunbathing regime. On the rainiest day we've had so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not been great, has it? Um, mostly sunny, as I said. Um, but on today's episode, we're going to look at the under-23's results. So their 3-1 loss to Spain, their 1-1 draw with the Netherlands, the Lionesses' demolition of Austria, uh, a look ahead to their fixture tomorrow against Italy, and then this window as a whole. Um, there's a few themes that have come out of this that maybe we can discuss. Uh, and of course, Sophie, you're still going to have to give us your moment of the week. Okay. Don't think you're getting away with it. <laughs> um, before we get into it, though, make sure you've subscribed wherever you're, whether you're listening or whether you're watching on YouTube. Make sure you're subscribing so you don't miss any extra episodes or any weekly episodes. Um, and you can always reach out to us on our socials as well. Red Girls on the ball on pretty much everything. Um, under 23s. We've seen them play two games now under Emma Coates. Um, so f- give me your, your summary of how you think they've gone. Um, I think they were, yeah, two good run outs. I think they were a bit poorer than they wanted to be in the first game against Spain. They weren't quite up to speed. I think they had a really good first half actually, mm. but then they just kind of dropped off in the second half. Today, in the game against um, the Netherlands, they Started a bit slow, maybe the first 15 minutes, but really got up to really good intensity, good at the good levels, um, lots of energy. They had so many chances, they just couldn't put them away. Um, and they'll be frustrated at that and frustrated that they let the Dutch score in injury time. Mm-hmm. But I think when you look at the camp holistically, the fact that they're here, the fact that they're here with the senior team, the fact that they've got lots of minutes in legs and, you know, players like Ruby Mace and Laura Blinkilda Brown, who haven't been playing much recently, um, have good, good run-outs as well. So um, overall, I guess it takes the boxes of what they wanted to do. It's about preparing them for the senior team um, and that's what they've done. What have you made of it, Susie? Have you been impressed? Were you maybe a little bit disappointed in the first game? No, I mean, I, I suppose I agree with Sophie in that, like, I think I think there's probably a great 90 minutes within those two games. Yeah. But then how often do we see, like, senior experienced teams put together a perfect 90 minutes across one game? It's not actually that often. So there was a lot to... Um, I think a lot more positives from the Netherlands game. The first, yeah, like 20, 30 minutes of the Spain game, I thought they looked really sharp and then it tailed off sort of around the time the England senior side came to watch them in the stands. They got nervous. They got freaking them out. Not completely coincidental. Um, But the Netherlands game really, they really impressed me because I was looking at the... um, When when they lined up at the start and I was thinking, Christ, the, the Netherlands team look a lot sort of physically bigger and stronger and and yeah like just in a better place in in those areas than England but like technically the the talent was with England so I found that really exciting um and I also thought they keep had a really good game Mm. and like England should have scored more and that goal at the end should not have mattered but because there were so many missed chances you know off the bar etc that yeah caused problems Emily more widely you've talked to some of these under 23 mm. players over the last kind of camp what have you made of them coming into the senior squad and does it sound like they're finding the benefits yeah I think we've seen it you know from when we first got here when we chatted to them there was a bit of a buzz they seem very excited I think a lot of these players will know seniors to a, to an extent but we'll never have spent a lot of time with some of them especially the ones that don't play in the WSL or the ones that haven't come you know the few Arsenal players none of them 23s are Arsenal players so they'll be aware of them but I think it's a really nice chance to kind of bond and, and kind of have open conversations I assume to you know bridge the gap because when you do make the jump from a youth into a senior level it can be really daunting I think we've seen it before where you can kind of have a deer in the headlights sort of moment and I think this kind of 
slightly normalizes it a little bit like it humanizes experience like they are just other players they're not you know so it's nice for them but I think it's been really good I think having the the opportunity for Serena and, and the seniors to come and watch has probably given them a bit of a fight obviously it didn't work so well in the first game <laughs> but you know today it didn't seem to phase them when they showed up so I think there's growth in that I think from that first game to the second there was as Susie said so much improvement that I think a lot of that will have been kind of being able to be in around this environment, take those sorts of things to work on. But then, you know, whether they were getting input from the senior team, things like that, I think it probably will play a factor in, in their development. Emma yeah. Coates afterwards was very happy. And mm-hmm. I think that shows, yeah, like, was. obviously you want to win games of football, but I think she very much knows her role within the 23s and they want to be successful. But ultimately, these games count for nothing. And it's, it's literally that preparation piece is getting someone like an Aggie Beaver Jones or a Laura Blinkilder Brown ready for that next step for when, you know, the likes of what like Grace Clinton has done recently, making that step to the seniors and making it not so such a daunting or steep um, process. And I think you can see that, you know, I thought Aggie Beaver Jones was one of the best players mm-hmm. on the pitch today. And you could tell that she's of the level now where she looks senior it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be such a big jump mm-hmm. to that senior squad. Yes, she still has work to do. Um, but she's pretty much developing in the right way. And mm. there's a couple of them in, in that squad that are going that way. And then you've got some younger players as well who are just starting out in their 23's journey. They're still 19, 20 years old and they, they're they starting to get this glimpse of what can be as well when they, they move up to the senior squad as well. I, I love that they've had those that group, like quite a few of the under 23's train with the senior side. <laughs> Obviously, for that experience, not in and of itself, and that's really exciting for them, but more because then they come back into the under-23s environment having had that experience mm. in that, like, top-level environment and then want to, like, recreate that environment on the 23s level and build it up. And I think that then improves things for everyone at that level. So, like, I've, I've really liked that aspect of it. I want to know a player from the squad for each of you that has stood out now we haven't practiced this, so you may pick the same ones. <laughs> but we'll go with you, Emily, first. Um, I was torn because I'm going to go with Ella Morris. Damn it! <laughs> Do you want me to change? <laughs> I can go with Hannah Silcock. <laughs> there we go, yeah. All right, so Ella Morris and Hannah Silcock. But <laughs> Hannah Silcock has only played two games on 23s. Today was her second game, mm. and she scored. And she didn't look like she'd just come into this on 23 setup. She's a bit younger than the rest, but you would have assumed she's been in and around the setup for a long time. She's very comfortable, very settled. Um, And yeah, I just thought she came on in the second half of the first game and thought she was worked really well at the back with Kira Skills and the same today that I just, yeah, I was really impressed with her and I didn't think she looked like she Mm. was a a relatively new addition to this side. Susie, who are you going to be? So so, so cryptic, (laughs) I I thought Ella Morris was really (laughs) great. No! Um, just her pace was incredible today against the Netherlands like in particular I thought she was decent against Spain but like against the Netherlands I thought she was next level um, the like speed at which she got back when there was a Dutch forward I can't remember which one through pretty much one on one and she just sort of appears from nowhere and then just really clever play on the wing as well pushing forward mm. um, and we are so desperate for decent full backs um, at senior level that seeing some good ones at under 23 level and below is like quite reassuring because I'm quite worried about those positions okay yeah. and so for you I'm gonna go um Ruby Mace yeah. I think yeah good job. the problem with Ruby is she's not playing at a club and I do think that might become a problem when you think about her making that leap mm. to senior football she has to be getting minutes and the problem with where she plays for England which is in the sixth uh, which is where England are desperately in need of players as well. Like, we don't really have many sixes. Mm. We've tried Georgia Stanway recently in that position. So the fact that we got a really good one, like, really comfortable-looking player coming through, she's so good on the ball and she's so aware of um, the spaces around her, but also tough in the tackle. And she's got really good feet as well when she goes forward. She she has that kind of versatility to be able to move out of position as well and become a more forward-thinking player. But I do... I. Yeah, for me, it's just to worry about her minutes at City because I don't see how she's getting on the pitch when Hasegawa's fit. Mm. Okay, very good. I like that. Um, 
Mm? What's yours? Oh, Ooh, uh, <laughs> I'm the host. I'm going to jump put yeah, you on the spot. Sh- <laughs> well, you you, you bring us in. We are going to put you on the spot. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with Aggie Beaver Jones. I thought she far and away um, was excellent, and I just yeah, I think that step up into senior won't be as mm. scary for her because I feel like she raises the levels of everyone else around her. Yeah, um, and she's a real leader on the pitch as well. So yeah, I, I mean. I already thought she was good, but she really stood out for me. And Every single press that England did came through. Yeah, and she's so intelligent. She's like calling the shots around her, and, and you need that when you're you're stepping up at, to the next level. Yeah. Um, and I think her time at Chelsea's obviously massively helped that as well. Her her yeah. senior experience, despite her age. Some of those passes were so intelligent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and they're developing really nice link ups, which I think mm-hmm. is exciting as well. That even for the fact that there's been quite a lot of rotation within that down twenty threes, they've they've. I think nearly all of them have been on the pitch at mm-hmm. various times. And the fact that it, at times it was still relatively seamless, at, you know, first game wasn't so, but for this, for pretty much all of 90 minutes, you could see the instinctiveness between them mm-hmm. growing. And I yeah. think that's really nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, over to the seniors who we watched beat Austria 7 2. Yeah. Um, a team that are traditionally harder to break down, uh, a much changed England squad as well. Not the best stadium, uh, I might add. <laughs> um, what did you make of the game, Soph? I, I was, it was an unexpected result, I think, because normally it's like a yeah. 1-0 or a 2-1. I think I tweeted that um, I was really surprised by how far Austria had regressed. Mm. And that's not to say that England's performance wasn't good because it was really good. And I think they were passing it really nicely in the fact that there was rotation and there didn't seem to be much discrepancy in the way that they were building or those relationships were building. Um, but I did think Austria have gone backwards. I think it was really interesting, and I asked Serena Wiegmann about this after the game, the kind of midfield area, and because uh, Kira Walsh was rested. So she loved that question. Yeah, <laughs> she did. Uh, Georgia Samway was starting in the six, and so I asked her about Georgia's performance, and she said that she plays there deeper for Bayern, Bayern Munich uh, more regularly this season, so it kind of natural fit for her to come into that six position. But also I asked her about the fact that, you know, they were kind of switching. You know, you had um, Ella Toon, who was playing a bit deeper than normal, um, so not quite a 10. And and then you had Grace Clinton, who's not naturally played in that, in that area, in that eight position. Mm-hmm. She's more, when you see her play for Tot- Tottenham, she's more either in the 10 or on the left-hand side. So it was an unnatural position for her. And she said in post-match that that was kind of a bit scary, didn't she? Like, mm-hmm. that that she was coming in to make her England debut in a position that she didn't really know and she found that a little bit scary. Um, but I think you saw a lot of versatility from all of the the midfielders, which really is exciting because the more they can problem solve themselves in games and have that versatility and adaptability and know that one can drop and play deep while the other one goes forward and it actually doesn't really matter sometimes who it is. They don't have all of the weak, like a weakness not to be able yeah. to do it. Um, I think that's pretty exciting for England. And it just shows more options as well. Yeah. Emily, were you surprised at the dominance from England? Like seven goals. Yes and no, because it seemed a little bit of England of old, kind of, you know, in the run-up to the Euros. It it seemed that sort of cohesiveness that we haven't seen so recently. Um, So, yes, because I I didn't think they would click as much, especially with how much rotation there was. Mm you wouldn't have expected things to have looked so seamless as they did. And I think the players spoke about this post-match that it clicked pretty instantly for them on pitch. And that isn't always easy to do when you make so many changes to a side. So I guess I was naive in thinking that it was, like you said, going to be a 1-0. But I think when you look back at the game, it it makes a lot of sense as to why it was such a a progressive game for them and, and why they kept Austria... You know, they were constantly one, two, three, four, five steps ahead of Austria. Mm. Um, And it's nice to see, especially after the Nations League run that they had, Mm. that the wheels haven't completely all fallen off and that this is the start of a new year. It's the start of a new journey, as Serena keeps saying. And it's nice to start that comfortably. Yeah, scoring goals especially. Um, Susie, the ground, the crowd, there's been a bit of discourse (laughs) around this. Um, some have spoken about this doesn't help the growth of the game. Uh, is that what this window is for? Mm, what have you no. made of the discourse? I, I don't really care if there's always fans at the, at the games. And I, I think there is a place for removing those pressures um, and the sort of need to put on a show when you're sort of going back to base a little bit and you're testing things out. And, you're you know, I mean, yes, there's a massive audience on telly. 
but I, I'm not overly worried about that, um, you know, sort of 900-ish, like, plus crowd. Um, I think there is an issue when it's that inaccessible to get to and the travel is hard and there were, you know, tweets from people who had to, had to sort of, uh, you know, kind of cancel the trip and cancel their tickets because they couldn't physically get there because mm. it, it is really difficult to get to and the quality of the ground is poor. The pitch wasn't the best, relatively speaking, compared to some of the places they've been training on this week, which were really high quality. So, like, I didn't like the choice of the ground because it was a rubbish ground. Yeah. But in terms of having fans, there, like, I don't think that's necessary all the time. I think, I, like, there's a place for those big show pieces where the pressure is on, but then there's a place for games when you're experimenting, testing things out to do it like that. So I'm, I don't have the biggest problem with it. Um but yeah, that ground should never have been chosen yeah, either. I, I think the line that irritated mm. me was that it's, it doesn't look good for the growth of the women's game. And I'd mm. like to think we're beyond proving that the game deserves to be where it deserves to be. I mean, the coaching also, staff aren't going, oh, well, what are we doing for this window? Because we want to make sure that we're impacting the growth of the women's game. Are they? No, they aren't. <laughs> they are thinking about the more important games to come. And ultimately, the two games this window are just practice games, aren't they? They're... Mm trying new things out, getting rotation on the field, having a bit of a competitive setting to do that, but there's a, absolutely nothing riding on it. And that's that's the whole point of this window and to get the weather here. And, you know, apart from today, it's been pretty nice. And the, Sorry, it rained the whole <laughs> first half in the seniors' first game. But then I got um, a, a sunburn, I think, today. Did you? God yeah, love so, you. Right. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so it's been a bit of a, yeah, it's been a really good camp in the sense that they've got the facilities, they've got a hotel, is lovely they um have a really nice environment around them they can get the under 23s in it's about the progress progression of the side moving towards the european qualifiers i think back to when we did she believes and no one ever really made much complaint about the fact that when we didn't play the usa there were probably about 100 to 300 fans in the stadium take us back to she believes (laughs) yeah but like but but the the point is that that was never considered a a problem Mm. at that and it was always the case that the usa games sold out but the ones that were played before or after the usa games you had much less people Mm. in them and at times i remember being in a very cold windy ohio um and there were literally about 200 fans watching england france and no one ever really complained about that and i think it's because we understood what this tournament is for. This window has never traditionally been a competitive window. It's mm-hmm. it's always had an Arnold Clark Cup or a Cyprus Cup or a She Believes Cup. It's about practice. It's about... And it's only this this time, really, that it's become a competitive window with the Nations League. Yeah, I think that's a point that is kind of... I feel, for me, has kind of flown under the radar a little bit in terms of this is the first time that England have essentially had an opportunity to do what they want to do with this window. And it's rare... Right? Like, that's thing, like, it's rare that, an, mm-hmm. that a nation is able to basically dictate what they... You know, they can decide where they want to go, if they want to do friendlies or simply just do training or whatever, like... And so I think you have to start putting those things first. Like, yes, OK, having more fans would have been great, mm-hmm. but what's important is the fact they're in the warm weather. So when you're looking at training... You know, when you're in England, you're in the rain and the cold. In between certain training setups, players can't just be stood around like they could be in the sun. And it's things like that, considerations like that, that you have to think about that this window is actually really pivotal in the run-up to a, another string of games and international windows and things that count. So if we're then going to start thinking, well, actually, if we stayed in the UK and have loads more fans, what are the team, what is England and the Lionesses losing out on by having that? And for me, having more fans doesn't anywhere near trump the importance of a successful training window that is better by being out in Marbella. Like, how have, like what, we've got, like, six teams out in Marbella at the moment doing friendly Everyone's counts? here. Like, if, 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 if every nation is doing... should have done a tournament. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, because we don't want more compared to football. But if every nation's are doing a similar thing, then clearly there's got to be something that's working with that and yeah. okay yeah we haven't got a lot of fans in this window but okay yeah. next time I, when we I play at Wembley I wouldn't a smaller ground the problem was just yeah. the quality of the ground like, I think yeah. the players deserve better quality yes. facilities yeah, that's completely. it I think that's I think, the only issue I have with the yeah. grounds and the location yeah. 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 yeah agreed okay so standout players for the Lionesses from each of you I'm going to start with Susie in case she has a yes. little meltdown this time my little CA <laughs> no should I swap? Should I swap? No, it's fine. I've got another one. I'm surprised, actually. I can swap. I've got three lines. I've got three lines. Tell us why. Um, I, I mean, it, it, 
links back to my pick for the under 23s as well in that England have a dearth of uh, fullback options and replacing Lucy Bronze is like one of the biggest question marks around mm. the future of the England team and she just performed so well there so like defense so like if anything I would say more defensively assured than Lucy is now at the moment um not got the same attacking threat going forward or like obviously Lucy brings so much in like in terms of leadership qualities and when a game isn't going well like grabbing it by the scruff of the neck and trying to get something out of nothing which sometimes works and sometimes doesn't <laughs> World Cup final um but uh like in terms of like a really really solid defensive option that has bags of potential to develop those attacking skills um in a way, I sort of, I know she's playing so well for Man United as centre back, but I'd like to sort of see her have that role at club and country because I feel like if you're going to be doing it for England, you need to be doing it at club level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, wouldn't it have been so good for him to do that in the Arsenal game? Just it would have made so yes. much more yeah. sense. Yeah. 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 More naturally in the middle, yeah. it's yeah. more natural. Put Meyer making against Beth who the was change her face time, time, yeah. you know? Yeah, okay. Over to you, please. Well, I was bang- I thought you were going to say Lotta. We did think so. That. Then I, that's why I was going to go with them. I didn't want to be cliched, but Lotta and Les were no, two we, of my other picks. No. <laughs> um, I'm going to go Georgia Stanway. Oh, not not so much. I know she's been in around the setup for a long time, but I thought she was really, really good in that deep role. Yeah. And I mm. thought when you're looking, Serena doesn't always like to change things up by with players, but mm. the versatility in the squad is massive. So I think if she takes players that she trusts and then can move them into other positions, she's getting basically the best of every single world you could want. So, and the way she stepped up, I thought was really good. Had the armband for a period of time as well. And we, we know with Georgia, she can be a little bit quick to anger at times, but she's very calm. I think her leadership has grown a lot at Bayern. So I thought she was really good in the deep role. And I think it will be good for Kira Walsh also to get a bit of rotation in that position. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I thought she was just really good, and actually, I can kind of forgot my other options after that. Okay, so, so mature, good, good choice, yes, very really good. So mature. I'm going Grace Clinton. Okay, you're I've taken. Off. I assumed everyone was going to yeah. go, go on. for Grace Clinton. That's why I went for mine. I have another one. <laughs> okay, I'm going Grace Clinton because I thought that that was. I mean, it's a scary situation going into. Not that she's scared, but you know what I mean. It can phase players when they go into their debut for the national the national team. And I think she adapted to a role that she doesn't normally play really well. I think you can tell how much she gets on with the group. Their little like hugs and smiles when she scored. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I think that shows exactly what she's about. And she's a really likable individual, and she really fits in with the the, the team as well. Um, so beyond being just a brilliant football player, which mm-hmm. is absolutely crucial at international level, it's it's part of you have to have that kind of personality as well as 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 being super good on the pitch and I think after she came off at half time Rachel Daly and Mary Ups went straight for her made a complete mm-hmm. beeline for her gave a big hug gave her a pat on the head um, and I think that just kind of summed it up but it was a brilliant performance she didn't look face at all yeah mm-hmm. um, I had a couple as well um, I'm kind of torn between Neve Charles and Leslie Russo mm-hmm. but I might go at Neve Charles purely bef- because of the chat we've had about fullbacks and yeah. because she's finally getting successive starts for England she's doing really well at club it, and we were picking our starting 11 in the WSL and we put Neve Charles at yeah. left back and I, I think she's being really consistent at the moment and um, so I'm really pleased to see her uh, getting a chance now with England more regularly so I'm going to give it to her I think that's a good selection of players yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, tomorrow is quite a different challenge against Italy and at the press conference today Serena spoke about Italy's desire to press high and that's yeah. something that they want to train against mm. and that they're quite physical. Um, what do you think we can expect from this game? I think, I mean, that kind of sums it up, but I think they, it's a different kind of proposition for England to Austria who are quite compact, um, maybe sit back a bit at times and don't always look to go forward, whereas I think Italy will be more on the front foot. Um, I still expect England to have enough tools in their armory to over overcome that. And I think it will be, yeah, an intense game of football. I think we haven't played Italy. We played Italy, what, in the Arnold Cup, Cup, mm-hmm. Cup last year? It was quite a good game. Finished 2-1, I think, or something like that. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be a good contest, a physical battle as well. And so it's just another way of England preparing to face opponents that they're going to meet in the Euro 25 qualification because they're not all going to be 
the Dutch or, yeah. you know, free-flowing football or wanting to go straight forward. They're going to be different propositions with your, you know, your lower-down teams as well mm. coming into the mix. So Was that LJ's um, first goal when they played in Arnold Clark Cup, if I made that up? Maybe. I can't remember. No, so that, that was now. against South Korea. That was the first game. Ah, it was um, AC Cup. It was AC Cup, but it yeah. was the first game. But yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting it's because... Great memory. Yeah, yeah. love that. Um, yes. Rachel Day scored against Italy, didn't she? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, like, it's, gonna, it's just going to be another way of just building up Different type practice. of football, I think, to train yeah. against as well. It's mm-hmm. what you want from this, this window. It's, it's preparing to break down different opposition. Um, we know Fran has gone home. Uh, it's not serious. Serena want, was keen to kind of say that, but she said, you know, this is a friendly window. There's no need to... Put any kind of pressure on her so she's gone back to Chelsea but Serena said Chloe Kelly's back in training do you think we'll have more changes tomorrow Susie? Yeah I think so I'd really like to see Chiara Keating in goal yeah. I think she's earned it um, being phenomenal um, and it makes sense to rot- rotate when you're trying to figure out who is your number two behind yeah. them right um, I want to see Lotta start I am dying for her to start a game for England. Like, what the hell is going... Who has she killed? <laughs> like, <laughs> what, what has she done <laughs> to, to stop her from getting a start for what, England? What was that, like, you like, wanting to be cliché? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, like... I've, I've done the, you know, the nice bit. Um, what has she done to not earn... A, like, I even thought towards the end of last season, right? Like, she was phenomenal when Arsenal had no players left and we're having to put the bodies on the line and got to the semi-final of the Champions League and I just don't know what she's got to do to like be picked above some of the other players well let's get this episode wrapped and out and maybe Serena will listen I hope so there you she's go she's the most consistent course. defender in the country the absolutely moment. 100% mm. um, Emily we've also got the Nations League final then on Wednesday uh, Spain yeah. taking on France and then Germany taking on the Netherlands for that final Olympics spot mm-hmm. how do you see those two games going? I think from, I had both games on, kind of keeping tabs on them during the England game and Spain were really dominant. I think the Netherlands had a few good chances, but, and I think, you know, Salma Parallel, yeah, could have took Spain, you know, four or five nil up at one point. She had so many chances, but they were just getting put wide. Um, But from that performance, I think it's probably going to be spit in Spain's hands to win the Nations League. I think... The, for me, the big focus is going on who's going to take that third place spot, and yeah. mm. they're both two teams that have been slightly underwhelming in in recent games. Yeah. So I, I think it's going to be a big thing for the Dutch, depending on who is going to be available. Um, a couple of injuries in their squad, so I think if they have players available, I would want to tip the Netherlands. But I think it's always a mistake to count Germany out too early. But also, except at the World Cup, maybe. they've kind of taken a gamble on a few players. <laughs> for that game that's the old joke there as as I said that I was like I could just see the comic going do you not remember where they got knocked out in the World Cup Um, they they gambled on a few players I think as well Mm -hmm. in that game and it didn't pay off so now they're probably going to have to gamble on those players again which is quite frustrating I would love to see Damaris starting I think she started that game that knocked you know that knocked England out of the nation yeah Yeah. yeah. but I think she brings a lot to the side that I think rotating her into the team giving a few other players a bit of rest yes yeah, absolutely for me would be a, a good a idea key. Um, so f- we've come to it finally Christ. your standout moment of the international break please I don't know why you're saying oh Christ I did give you like 30 minutes warning I'm going to go with Beth Mee's goal which one the first one the curler into the top corner with her left foot um, I yeah just to, I just think that shows like the fact that she is truly back now. Mm-hmm. And I think she said in, in one of the um, press conferences or media stuff that we did that you know, everyone expects you to kind of be back straight away. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that it takes a bit of time to get right back to your level and she's done it probably quicker than most. But she to score that with your left foot is pretty special. She and also told me that her left foot was standing on. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> she also did like good. the fact that Susie pointed out that she was one of the oldest people. Yeah. She was the oldest on the pitch at one point. And to she be went, fair, she said it. She, to be fair, she did. So my, my favourite thing is then when you asked her about it, she turned around and went, I like to, th- I like to call it experience. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure, but I, I think she's just so crucial to this yeah. single side, especially when you've got a lot of youngsters coming through and a lot of inexperience there. Yeah, for sure. Um, right, well, I'm excited for tomorrow's match. Uh, I've enjoyed our time out in Marbella. We'll be back um, to the WSL next weekend, which which is, feels like it's coming, it's coming thick and fast. 
I'll be at West Ham versus Manchester United. You'll be at Brighton versus Bristol, which is a biggie. I feel like they're all a biggie Huge. when Bristol's involved. Um, so yeah, make sure you're following us across our channels to stay up to date with those. Wherever you're watching or listening to the pod, make sure you're subscribed. Guys, thanks so much for joining. It's been lovely to have you. I feel like we've talked a lot about this stuff already and now I've just made you repeat it all for the podcast. <laughs> um, but we'll definitely have you again. I hope you guys enjoyed their expertise. We certainly did. Um, so we'll see you all very soon on our next episode of Extra Time with Girls in the Ball. We open wine now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>